Greetings to all of you special magical workers, light workers, spiritual souls out there. I hope you are having a wonderful day, at least in some way. I know that sometimes it's hard to sustain a full day of pure joy. <laughs> it's not an easy task by any means. But I hope this day brings you some magic and some meaning and some true deep connection. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit today about what draws us to magic. What, what do some of us have in common that leads us to magic and things of the spirit? Um, maybe in contrast to those who really aren't drawn to these things. Just this podcast is new and it's just beginning to reach out into the world and find its audience. And I truly hope it reaches those who can resonate and gain something from the ideas that I'll be sharing. And I hope that it does not upset people who stumble upon it with different opinions. I feel this may be starting to happen, and that's why I'd like to address the a little more about alignment today and then work into the second half of the, of the podcast, work into some things that we as spiritual seekers and as magical practitioners want to work on to fortify and strengthen ourselves and improve our skills in these areas. So first, let's go back to what draws us to this world of magic and mystery and the occult sometimes and the hidden, the unseen. Well, I'm sure there are just a mad variety of reasons and each one of you could come up with your own and they're probably just as individual as we are individuals. But I think some things we might have in common one is, one possibility I believe exists, is that we're born right from the get-go with maybe some different inclinations. So I have observed for so many years now various friends that I have, some interested in these things and others just not interested at all. And yet we maintain beautiful friendships because each person brings invaluable um, things into our lives, right? So not everyone, we, we certainly do not have to surround ourselves with people that agree with us on everything. That won't even happen anyway. We just have too many differing opinions and we're entitled to those opinions. But I have found that sometimes even from childhood, uh, we're we're in a group of people that are just interested in these things. Maybe it comes, it's kind of which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Like if you have psychic experiences happening to you, maybe even in youth, that is going to awaken you and cause you to question those things and take more of an interest in those things than someone who maybe is not experiencing those things. Or even if they are they are here for different reasons, uh, maybe to fulfill a different purpose than following that path. And maybe they just don't pay attention to them or they're not as sensitive to those things happening. So I think that we can't ignore the fact that some of the draw and the attraction and alignment um, for many of us that we have to these worlds of mystery comes right in with us at birth. And, and perhaps that's because the interest we will have in these things will help us develop in the ways we need to, to fulfill our destinies. So these gifts and these inclinations and sensitivities to maybe psychic phenomena or other beings or other dimensions that we may have from the time we're born, these, these aren't accidents. You know, these are probably a part of our whole soul and are wrapped up in our purpose. And so that's one thing to consider is that those of us on this path may not even <laughs> have been able to avoid it. In other words, we're just so uh, tied to it 
There, it's just an integral part of our purpose and our destiny that our souls made sure we would find this path when we incarnated into the 3D dimension. I think aside from that idea, which may cover the whole gamut <laughs> right there, but if we, if we think of some other reasons, let's step aside and look at some things that maybe occur that don't have to do with um, an interest all the way from childhood. I think that people share a need to have find and have meaning in their life. We are striving to understand our purpose on earth and we want to find answers to things that we can't always explain through other means like science uh, or analysis. Um, we, we know, I think, in our hearts that there is more to the picture than we see. And in some people, this rises up. This drive to know about the unseen rises up to the point where it can't be ignored anymore. Again, I think there are whole groups of people whose purpose maybe is not tied in as strongly to, um, spiritual work in their current incarnation. And so they're on a different path and I believe they are able to ignore those promptings. But those of us drawn to these things, we all, we fall into a segment of people that is attracted to finding out more. Now this can spread into other areas of our life, not just spirit, not just magic, not just soul work, but also even truth, seeking and looking and searching for truth that may lie beneath the surface, that may not be revealed to us through, through ordinary means. And we start sharing these traits with each other. We start noticing that we are clustering with other people who want to talk about these things, who want to explore what just happened to them and share their experiences, no matter what they are, what they range from dreams they've had to visions, to channeling, to communication with other species, all kinds of things. So this prompting to look beneath the surface, I think is a big part of the magical community. And it is, it ties into our, maybe a basic need for many humans, not all, but many, for this meaning, to feel like our lives have some purpose. Now, I never want to downplay the, the types of things we can accomplish in life, even without deep spiritual connections, because we're all in the position to do kind, acts of kindness and help others and you know, um, really work through and in the 3D world in some very substantial and meaningful ways. But there is this extra element of what's beneath all this? Where do, where do I go? You know, after I pass from this incarnation, what do all my acts mean? Do they have meaning? Do they have extended meaning? And this drive to find out even more about our lives, I think is a big is a big part of our a spiritual community. Then some other things that I've noticed just recently, in, I would have to say in the last few years, I really have seen a growth of people who feel, genuinely feel they are hybrids of some sort or they're carrying parts of their soul that has existed in other times, in other realms, uh, in other dimensions, and maybe even other galactic planetary realms. And they have so much in common. What I'm finding with this group is a great deal of service. They are very, they have an orientation towards helping others. I find this also in healers for forever, you know, really, this is nothing new in the healer community. The blessed people who 
day after day go out of their way to help alleviate pain, sickness, illness, disease, and the emotional healers, those that are willing to comfort and soothe, and the spiritual healers who want to offer themselves to people in distress and pain as a bridge to higher dimensions and divine realms. All these wonderful people, my goodness, they have also acted in service to others throughout time. So I believe that another component that I've, I've seen showing up in the group that I have, my friends and my, my outreach seems to be connecting with is this commonality of a deep desire to help others. And I guess the list just goes on and on. Now, there is a, a little bit of a, a difference maybe in when I say magic with a K, I always use that K on the end to emphasize the idea that it's magic that we do intentionally with a purpose. I even, I, I know I could be criticized for this because there are definite forms of magical traditions that require just certain ritual techniques and are very careful with how they carry out their rituals and spells. But for me, I extend that magic a little bit farther than just that very strict tradition. I even extend the ideas that link up with magic to things like the law of attraction. To me, the hermetic principles, the seven hermetic principles that dominate a lot of the Western ancient traditions in magic, over, they, they, they flow into many, many areas, including law of attraction, visualization, and manifestation magic. And so I would say those of us attracted to that type of magic also share a desire to add or subtract or change something in our lives. Because this is truly the, at the core of magic, isn't it? This alchemy, this concept of transformation. It, whether it be an inner transformation, a cleansing of the spirit, a change in our attitude, or whether it be an outward manifestation, such as gaining more fame, gaining um, prestige, improving lifestyle, um, increasing abundance, locating a soulmate to spend our lives with these types of things that show up in, in our physical world. And when people are attracted to the type of magic that's tied to intention, I believe we share maybe an innate knowledge that we can tap into something that will help us bring about the changes we desire. And so we are, we are calling out and we're searching and we're trying to find the clues and the, the skills we might need to improve our lives and make changes. Of course, reaching into the invisible fields and the unseen realms, I believe really is a skill and in some a natural born talent, well, in all of us, but can be developed, can be developed no matter where we start from. Um, I believe it can be developed to a point where we'd be very happy and satisfied with our progress. And because it is a type of technology, let's say, of course it can be exploited. And of course there are those who would choose to use their skills that they do develop in more negative ways. And that, I guess, is just part of our earth experience. It's just something... Um, that's part of humanity still at this point, and maybe part of other creatures and other species as well. But I am hoping that the presence um, of love and divine energies can penetrate the human race and help more and more people awaken, and that we can begin to, you know, oh, put more light <laughs> into the world and help it uh, offset the darkness that we do have to see and we do have to live with. So we share, ma magical practitioners 
spiritual seekers, sages, mystics, we share at least some of these things um, I've mentioned. We have some of these things in common. Whether it be natural gifts all the way up the scale to sensing there's ways we can affect our reality and uh, choose to do so through through measures that aren't always recognized by everyone else. All right, so here we are. We find ourselves in this group that advocates looking into the mysteries and finds value there and finds sustenance and finds courage and hope and life and meaning there. And I believe it's important for us to be reminded that we aren't alone here in this group, that many people around the world share these feelings with us. And that this can be a strong knowledge, to, this can be a very uplifting knowledge to have, to remember how many truly share at some level this interest with us. And this can give us strength. This can give us unity. And this can bring us the knowledge we need to understand that we can be a force to be reckoned with and a legitimate, a legitimate force in the world. So knowing that we are unique and we, we, we fit into this group in one of these, one or another of these ways, maybe more than one, we can go a step further and even find that within the group that supports magical beliefs and manifestation techniques and connection to divine realms and other things. We might even have a smaller group inside of that one that is really capable of the deep dives that's necessary to really get down there in the nitty gritty and do the soul work that is painful and come back up with the rewards of doing that soul work and maybe even new perspectives on what reality is and what truth really is and new ways to find meaning and know that their lives are meaningful because of experiences and because of the prices they've been willing to pay. So I think that we're all in this together and then there's a spectrum within this tribe of, of mystics that, you know, that ranges from casual interest all the way to complete immersion and I respect all these all the all of you all your feelings and wherever you are on your own path and wherever you lie on that spectrum it's magical and wonderful and I'm just so thrilled that you exist and that you're here because I need you I need to know you're there I don't want to feel alone either. I, I want to feel the energy of others holding the light around the world with me. Thank you. So now for the second half of this podcast, I'd like to speak to, of course, those of you who are still listening are surely among this group. And I'd like us to take a few minutes to go back to what you might consider some real basics. I foresee, and I foresee in some ways this is wonderful news and in some ways it can be scary, but I think we need to fortify ourselves. I think that uh, many transitions are upon us. And some of these, we don't even know how to speak of them yet because they're going to be new to us. They're going to be new experiences for the earth as a whole, not necessarily new to those who have already been dealing with interdimensional activities, multidimensions, um, you know, different forms and varieties of magic and mystery, but new to the world as a whole. And this is going to take, have an effect on all of us. Even if we feel we've, we're prepared, we may find that we're just slammed out of the blue with feelings we haven't dealt with in years or thought that we are, 
our platform and our belief system was firm and strong and suddenly find ourselves in the midst of doubt and second guessing and this could happen and I'd like us to fortify ourselves as much as possible and I think one of the ways that we can do this is to go back and review our basics go back and look at what is inside of us as it pertains to our strength within our our magical work and our spiritual connections so I'd like to start Today, and I'll be going back to this over and over, the concept of know thyself. This is very powerful because without an understanding of how we each work, work how, we, how we tick, uh, it's very difficult to move forward. I cannot actually, even though I can admire and receive inspiration from someone I am listening to, in one of these fields, in one of these areas of expertise, I can't actually take that person's, you know, grid and make it be my own because it's just too unique. And my, my purpose, my soul history and my soul destiny is, is too unique and it has its own grid. And so we are, we're never going to escape the need to know thyself, to know ourselves really well, because this will strengthen what we can do. We are, of course, we gain insights, information, tips, and just remarkable insights from those we follow, listen to, or read that have years of experience in some of these fields. And I, for, I, I am a big follower of many people, and I love to absorb and learn about things people have been through and sift through that information and see what resonates with me to use it. So by all means, this is something we should do if we're inclined to on our search. However, again, you will be creating your own path. This is what it's going to come down to, of course. And I believe those who are listening and will continue to listen to these podcasts are are already they already know this. I, I'm pretty sure you already know this. So let's go into know thyself a little bit and maybe some mindfulness ideas for the day. Let's take the idea of alchemy and that magic is about change. How long has it been since we have looked at how we view change? This is significant. We get going through our days and our activities and we forget to refocus back in on some of these concepts that we will definitely strengthen our intentional work. So let's say something positive moves into your life. We need to take a look at how we react to that. It's a change because it's there's something that has boosted us. So evidently we were at a quote lower state and then we feel we're at a higher state. Now this could be because of someone we love, you know, entering the room and saying kind words to us. Or it could be because the sun is shining, it's the middle of winter, and finally the sun comes out. It could be that you're recuperating from an illness and there's a there's a better feeling today, you're feeling stronger. Whatever the case may be, a change has occurred for the better. And you're aware of that. You're aware of that. Take a few minutes, take some moments throughout the day today to think about the degrees of that change. Notice, go back in your mind and think about the latest change you experienced that was positive. Can you identify anything that happened in your body? Can you identify any feelings? Does anything specific happen to you when a positive change occurs, at least when you perceive, at the very least, a positive change is occurring for you? Do you get butterflies? Is there any sound you hear? Do you get warmer? Do you get colder? Do you become more awake? Do you get sleepy? Do you feel more secure? Do you feel worried that you don't deserve such things? These are, these are things to revisit just a little bit. And now we need to go and look at a change that may be negative. Something pops into your life that you just wish just hadn't done it. You know, you could have done without it. 
And it's, it's bringing on negative feelings. Again, so many, this could be from a multitude of sources, right? And these things happen throughout the day, little bumps up, little bumps down. And sometimes there's big bumps up and big bumps down. So you be, you determine what, which thing you'd like to focus on for the sake of this little exercise, but find a, find one of your negative changes that has recently occurred. And it could be a small one. Doesn't matter. But let's make the same observations about, let's retrace what you went through. What did we go through when that negative change came in? Did you feel something in the pit of your stomach? Was it hard to breathe? Was it easier to breathe? Was What came up? What came up emotionally? Was it sadness, fear, pain? What happened? What happened? All right, so noticing change is going to become very critical as you continue to go back and work in your spells and work in your soul alchemy state. There's other changes, too, to consider that we can see in the 3D world. If you've ever gardened, you can see the change from a seedling into a plant and possibly into a fruit or something to harvest. You can see change occurring as we watch the aging process. And it's, you know, it speeds up if you're watching something like your pets or something. You might be able to observe, oh, goodness, she's so much different than just three years ago because the lifespan's a little longer typically for humans. We might not notice the changes that, you know, come with aging, but we have, we go through entropy ups and downs all the time. It's all around us in the world. My goodness, just watching water drain down the sink. It's changing. It's changing direction, isn't it? Or if you're boiling water and it turns to steam, you're watching a change take place. And these are all, these are all traceable, trackable changes that, you can watch in in our physical domain. Now, this is important. It's important to just take a few moments. I want us to concentrate on change for the next few days and just take a few moments to focus on that. I mean, we normally just let it go right by because change is occurring all the time. And of course we couldn't, if we focused on it all the time, we'd never get anywhere because we have to keep going in the direction we're headed and can't get sidetracked continually. But just for the just for the next 24 hours, just for the next day or two, when it occurs to you, something's changing here, just go, go aside for a moment. Go into the quiet place and say, hmm, what am I seeing? Now, if it's a physical thing like water turning to steam, this is very helpful when you begin to work with elements. And you begin to ask elemental energies to help you. Because you want to be aware of how elements might, quote, feel or might be changed due to an external force like heat. Just take a few seconds. You don't have to dive too deep and and force yourself to areas that really just become too nebulous. But you can just take a few seconds to say, Okay, so the water is boiling when I, when I apply heat, and it becomes lighter. And for some reason, this water bubbles up, steams up, and merges with air, merges with the atmosphere around it when heat is applied. Because we're going to come back to these very central little mindfulness moments as we dive deeper into our rituals and our intentional magic. So we want to go back and find out how we individually process and observe change. This is the key. Does change scare us? And why? Why is it scary? We need to look at this because if any of, if any of us have a particular thing we've been focusing on, hoping to bring about change in our lives. And yet we're ignoring the fact that change is scary or that that particular change would be scary and threatening. Then we step back and wonder why it's not occurring. We can see why if we are willing to admit to our deepest feelings about change itself. 
and about change as it pertains to particular events. Some of us are not worried at all about attending a party. This is just no big deal. So we're going to change from being alone for a while, and we're going to go out into a group of people. Just not a problem. Others are terrified of that kind of change. And some, of, some people with strong empathic qualities have reason to be afraid because that change affects them in a very different way than it affects the extrovert who just feeds off multiple social contacts and connections and networks. So over the next couple of days, I think our assignment, if you could call it that, is to go back and do, do some very simple, simple observations about yourself. You might want to take notes. I mean, there's just no substitute for journaling a little bit here because every magical person out there knows about the value of their grimoire or their book of shadows or their personal journal, their spiritual or dream journal. These are, these are critical because you will forget your observations. <laughs> Life just gets busy and we forget. And so if we take some notes, we can revisit them and they're going to come into play. They're going to become very important as we begin this journey of knowing ourselves and re-fortifying, strengthening, and giving ourselves the kind of foundation we need to go forward in a very new world that's coming upon us. I will close for now. I thank you, all of you, for listening. And I look forward to the exchange of energies that we can all feel as we do these little exercises and as we think about change and as we, we revisit how we change. We, we might, it might even occur to us as we do this that, hey, this is different for me than it was the last time I took a look at this. And that's important. And when we do journal, it's, I know it's a busy time and I, for one, don't even have time for long journal entries, but maybe keywords or very short notes, uh, they, they're better than nothing. I found out myself, if I'll just write a few things down, I can, it comes back to me much better than saying, oh, I don't have time to write a whole page of entries here. I agree. I mean, I understand. But let's use our findings. Let's, let's set ourselves on kind of a dedicated path, as, particularly as this maybe small segment of, of the world who truly resonates with all things magical and spiritual and light, and who truly just needs to be allowed to accept and dwell in multidimensional realities in order to feel meaning and in order to feel fulfilled. I think we are that small segment. And we need this, and I think this will be helpful. So that's my hope. All right, I'll close and welcome your energies into this network of light and uh, wish you all the best this day. Bye for now.